It all comes down to this as Burley steps up. And he's done it! He's won it for Tottenham! It's almost like there's no goalkeeper at all. What a strike! Let's see that from another angle. You can see how much it means to him. As the crowd chants his name, Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. Nathan. Hmm? Huh? What time is it? It's family time. Family time? Welcome to family time. My name's Nathan. It's great to wake up and be with you today as we gather together, look at the Bible and learn more about Jesus. The de Villiers family are here. Hello. Hello. Shona and her brother Connor are here. Hello. And you're here too. So let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for family time. Please help us to learn loads about Jesus and to put our trust in you. Amen. Now we're starting off today thinking about remembering and forgetting. Can you remember a time when you forgot something? Maybe you promised to do something and then totally forgot and overslept, just to pick a random example. What happened next? Pause the video and chat for a minute to those you're watching this with about times when you forgot something and then restart the video when you're ready. Hopefully by then I will have got out of bed. We all forget things sometimes, or don't do what we say we will. Sometimes we say we're gonna do something easy, but then it slips our mind. Or sometimes we find that we've promised to do something really hard and we aren't actually able to do it. Like if you made a silly promise in a staff meeting to do a Beastie Boys style rap as part of a video. I mean, it's a fun thing to promise, but it can't be done. Well, God isn't like that. He never finds that he's suddenly made a promise that he shouldn't have done or forgotten about. And that's what our Bible verse today tells us. Today's Bible verse is so great, it actually comes twice in the Bible. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 15, and in Psalm 105, verse 8. So it's either this far through your Bible, or this far through your Bible. I'm going to read the one from Psalms, but they're actually exactly the same. Let's read what it says. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations. Should we say that together? He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations. See, God never forgets. He never over promises. What he has said, he will do. God remembers his covenant forever, which is great. Except, what's a covenant? Well, a covenant is an agreement between people about how they're gonna get on. A promise to do certain things a certain way. A bit like signing a contract or like getting married. A special kind of loving promise relationship. God has made covenants with people in the Bible. Promises to love them and rescue them and be their God. We're going to learn more about some of those in a bit. But as we start, it's just great to know that God remembers those covenants forever. He never forgets a promise. Instead, he always does what he says he will do. He remembers his covenant forever. The promise he made for a thousand generations. Fantastic. We're going to sing now a song we did back in our first video, My God is So Big. We're going to do it normally first with the actions, then there's a new bit based on this week's Bible verse, and then we're really going to mix things up. Okay, you ready? Let's go!
On Family Time, we're looking at the big story of the Bible. And so far, we've seen that God made everything, but that people messed it all up by sinning. Now, if that was the end of the story, the Bible would be a pretty short book and the world would be a hopeless place. But thankfully, part three of our big story is that God promises. We can't fix things, but God has made amazing promises to sort out the world that we broke with our sin. The Old Testament is the story of God making and keeping amazing promises to his people. After all, he remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations. So if it's possible, I'm going to tell you the whole story of the Old Testament in just four minutes and 33 seconds. Do you think I can do it? Here goes. Straight after Adam and Eve sinned, God made a promise that a man from Adam and Eve's family would crush the snake who ruined everything. A son of Adam is the one to watch. Adam and Eve had various kids. Those kids had kids, their kids had kids, and so on and so forth. That happens a lot in this story. And all those people kept on sinning. It got so bad that God destroyed the world with a flood. But he made a promise to rescue one family and start all over again. The family of a man called Noah. They're the ones to watch. God kept Noah safe on a special boat, just like he promised. But when they all got out into the nice clean world, guess what happened? They sinned again. But God made a promise that of Noah's three sons, Shem was the one to watch. Shem had lots of kids who had kids who had kids, and eventually there's a guy called Abraham. Even though Abraham was super old, God made him a promise to give him a son. In fact, more children than there's sand on the beach or stars in the sky. I said there were lots of kids in this. Abraham's family would be a great nation. They'd live in a land of their own and they'd enjoy God's blessings. Just like being back with Adam and Eve at the start. Fantastic. Amazingly, ancient Abraham did have a son called Isaac. Isaac had a son called Jacob. God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Israel's family was now the one to watch. Israel had 12 sons whose names I haven't got time to go into, but God made a promise that of all those sons, Judah would be the one to watch. Eventually, the big family ended up in Egypt. And now we're at the end of the first book of the Bible. One down, 38 to go. Don't worry, we will speed up. After 400 years in Egypt, the people of Israel had had loads of kids. The 12 sons were now 12 tribes. Well, 11 and two half tribes, so that still makes 12. Anyway, they were now a big nation of people, just like God promised to Abraham. But they were far from being blessed in a land of their own. They were slaves. Ah, but God made them a promise to rescue them. So he did. He used Moses to free the people out of slavery. Once they were out, God gave them commandments to show them the best way to live. But just like with Adam and Eve, they kept breaking the rules. And so God made them a promise. He showed them how bad people could still be friends with God by giving them the tabernacle, a special kind of tent where God lived with them, where they needed to make sacrifices. An animal would be killed instead of them so they could be forgiven. All of this was a promise that one day a perfect sacrifice would come to really deal with sin and a perfect priest would come to bring the people to God. Moses died, but God made a promise that another prophet would come one day to tell the people all about God and rescue them forever. Meanwhile, Joshua took over leading the people. He brought them into the land of Canaan, helped them win lots of battles like Jericho and stuff like that. Now God's people were a nation in a land of their own. Fantastic, two out of three. But they kept being naughty or doing their own thing. After a series of weird and wonderful leaders called the Judges, they eventually got a king. Hooray! Who turned out to be just as bad. (sighs) Until God handpicked a new king called David, a boy from the tribe of Judah. God made a promise. One of David's sons after him would be a perfect king forever. David's royal family was now the one to watch. Dave was a sinner like the rest of us and started messing things up almost straight away. After he died, his son Solomon became king. He built the temple, which was like the tabernacle tent, but a proper building made of stones and gold. More priests, more sacrifices. This was great. The closest it came to everything being coming true. God's people in God's place under God's king enjoying his blessing. But it didn't last. Why not? Sin again. People rejected God, starting with the leaders. The country split in two, with Israel in the north, Judah in the south. Both places had one bad king after another and they quickly walked away from God. So God sent them prophets to call them back. They didn't listen. The Assyrians came, attacked them Israel to the north, took them away, never to be heard of again. End of story for them. But not for Judah. God sent more prophets to warn them, but they didn't listen. So the Babylonians came, knocked down the temple, took the people of Judah away into exile. God's people booted out of God's place. No king, no blessing, no nothing. What they did have was God promises that he would bring them home again and rescue them. After 70 years, he did just that. He brought them back home and they rebuilt the temple, but it was never as good as it used to be. 
because God still wasn't finished. He made a promise that one day he himself would come and put things right, alongside all the other promises, like that the rescuer would be born of a virgin, born in Bethlehem, that he'd suffer and his death wouldn't be the end. Tons of amazing promises. So by the end of the Old Testament, we're all waiting with bated breath for God to keep those promises of a snake crusher, a world fixer, a blessing bringer, a family maker, a home giver, a slave rescuer, a sin sacrifice, a perfect priest, a law keeper, a good news prophet, a battle winner, a forever king, a people uniter, an exile ender, a rubble rebuilder, a promise keeper. We're waiting for the saviour king who is God himself. Now, how could God possibly remember all those promises, let alone keep them? Well, don't forget our verse. He remembers his covenant forever the promise he made for a thousand generations. So God would keep his promises, he did send a rescuer, and when we get to next week, we'll find out who it is. Spoiler alert, it's Jesus. Woo, I did it! It's pray time, we have so much to thank God for this week. So why not thank him for some of those promises? Thank him that he keeps his promises, and thank him for anything else you can think of that he's done for you. Grown-ups can pray, children can pray too. Why not pause the video, take turns praying and saying thank you to God, and then restart when you're ready. We're three chapters into our big story. God made, people sin, but God promises. Can't wait to find out what happens next. In the meantime, it's nearly time to go, but you can find out more information about King's Church Guildford on our website. Look at that. Or you can email us. For example, we got sent in this video of Florence enjoying our James 4 verse 8 video. <laughs> Thank you, Florence. But before we go, there's some questions for us to chat about or to think about if we're on our own. Here's a question for creche and climbers. That's not to five year olds. What does God always remember? A question for explorers, that's school years one to six. How many of God's promises from the Old Testament can you remember? Question for Impact and Rooted, school years seven to 13. Why do we need the Bible to be full of promises rather than just full of rules? And one last question for grown-ups: What have you found most encouraging from this week's video? Well, that's all from me. I will see you next time on Family Time. Bye.